Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater Soundcheck. This time out, the Wing, the latest digital mixing console from Behringer. To learn more about this console or any other Behringer product, visit Sweetwater.com. Before we start, I should let you know that what we actually have here is a preliminary pre-release of the Wing mixing console. Sweetwater is one of only two places to get the Wing in the United States, and so we have access to this early model so we can show you what's happening with it. Some things may change with the production units, but this is very close to the final model that will be shipping to customers. Now, Behringer's been making digital mixing consoles for a lot of years, and they brought all the experience and the knowledge they've gained in making those previous consoles into this single console. We have a ton of I.O. capability, super flexible routing capability, lots of processing power, and everything is completely configurable to exactly the way that you want to work. Behringer has designed the wing with a slightly different paradigm than other digital mixing consoles. They've separated sources, which are basically incoming signals, whether those are external incoming signals or signals that are being generated or processed inside the console itself, from the actual channels. And so we can do complete setup for all of our sources and then route those into our channels and use them more the way that you would think of a channel strip on a digital mixing console. We have up to 400 sources and they can be routed to up to 400 destinations. It's a ton of flexibility. We have 48 channels and those can be mono, stereo, or mid-side compatible. We have 16 buses, 8 matrix buses, and 4 main buses. And again, those can be mono, stereo, or mid-side compatible. We have 16 onboard effects processors, and there are two categories of effects, standard effects and premium effects. We'll explore that a little bit more later. As I mentioned, everything is completely configurable. Whether you want to change the way that the channels are laid out across the front of the board, whether you want to set what controls are showing up at what part of the console, or even if you want to change the way the lighting is set up on the console, whether on the front panel, the back panel, or underneath, you can do all of that very easily. Behringer has learned a lot about the mixing process using a digital process over the years as well, and they brought that to bear again in the wing. You have three different ways you can accomplish virtually any task with the wing. So no matter where you're at, no matter what state the console is in, you can always instantly reach out and grab the control that you need. The front panel of the wing is set up with several different sections. We have our main touch screen here. Now the touch screen allows you, of course, to see exactly what's happening inside the console, and you can also reach out and grab the controls that you want. But in addition to the touch screen, all those controls are also available on knobs, and those are all touch sensitive. We also have switches, of course, for affecting different processors. And we can also reach out and use the channel strip, which can be completely separate, completely independent to what's happening in the touch screen. So, for example, one person could be working on the touch screen to set things up. Another person could actually be dialing in the mix using the channel strip and the faders. And this right-hand section, which is very configurable, you could set that up as a standard output section, or you could set up other channels here that you could instantly grab, could be used for, again, independent functions. So two people can work very comfortably on the wing. Let's take a tour of the console and a look at how easy it is to get signals flowing in, routed into channels, processed with channel strips, and then back out. Sources can be connected using a number of different input formats. So we have analog inputs on XLR and quarter inch, and those actually use Midas Pro Series preamps. So those are top of the line preamps that are bringing signals in. In addition, we have three AES-50 connections that can connect to remote stage boxes. So we can have a ton of inputs coming in that way. I think something like 144 inputs. You can bring audio in over IP. We have USB audio inputs, AES-EBU. So a lot of different formats. You'll also be able to use Dante and other connection formats as well. A new one is something called StageCon. This is a single XLR, and that single XLR cable can carry 32 channels of audio, both input and output. So you could have, for example, 16 in and 16 out, or you could have 30 in and 2 out. This is ideal if you're connecting external in-ear monitor transmitters, for example. You could route those out using a single XLR cable into a breakout box in a rack and have them all connected with just one cable. Or if you have an external processing rack, you could hook it up in the same way with just one XLR cable. A very convenient format. And we'll be watching that as third-party solutions become available and breakout boxes become available as well. Once you have your source connected, we go to the routing page. And here we can choose the type of routing. So I have music coming in on the local inputs. And I've chosen input 7. And we'll make that a stereo input. So it'll automatically pair with input 8. And we can see signals already coming in here. We have gain control, and we can do that either with the touch screen, or we can do that with the knob to turn that up and down. We can customize that, so we can type in the name of our music player, for example. We can also assign a color to it. We'll make it yellow. Close this out, and we can add tags. These tags are very useful because we can use them to sort, and we can also use them to very quickly assign channels to mute groups or to DCAs. 
So we could put a tag on here that says uh, music. We could add a second one that just says uh, two channel. Two channel, add that. And once we're complete, then we can go back. One other thing we can do, go back to customize, we can assign an icon to this. Since this is music playback, we'll use a treble clef for that. And we'll close it out. For the sources, we can actually set up the head amplifier or the preamp right here on this page. So we can assign phantom power on and off, for example. We can mute that on and off. And so we can do all that setup here before it ever goes into a channel. All these sources can be set up, all of them feeding in. Again, we have up to 400 of those from different locations that can be coming in. We can do all that setup before we ever deal with the channels at all. A convenient way to do this is with the Wing Copilot app. This will allow you to connect remotely to the Wing console and you could stand on stage and actually do all this setup, all this labeling, set up all the tags and everything all there without ever being at the console, then walk back to the console and simply set up your channels. It's a very convenient way to work. Once we have all our sources set up in the way that we want to use them, we can then route them to our channels. We do that by going back to the home page. And now here along the left of the screen, we can see our different options for working with the channel strip. First up, we'll want to assign our input. We can do that here. So let's choose this. We will go to our local, choose seven and eight. And now we can see this is routed to our first channel. And if we look over here on channel one, we can see that iPod is showing up. Here's our treble clef icon that we assigned. And we can see that our signal is flowing in as well. Once we have our input assigned, we're done, we can go back. Now we can customize this channel as well. We can name the channel strip, we can assign various different things to it. But some of the really cool functions are the way the trim and the balance are set up. So the trim control, of course, we can grab that with our finger, and raise and lower things here. We can also adjust the balance of the stereo signal. We can do that either using the knob or we can grab with our finger and move things back and forth. We have our gain control here that we can adjust. We have our delay if we're using remote speaker systems. Three different filters. So there's a low cut filter, high cut filter, and also a tilt EQ that allows you to turn down the bass while you're turning up the treble or vice versa. We also have two different inputs available for each channel. So right now I'm on the main input, but we could also assign an alt input, which is a second input. One common use for the alt input would be for a virtual sound check. So you'd have a recording set up, a multi-track recording, and you could play it back through the channel for your sound check, and then switch back to your main. But you could also use it for backup microphones, or for two different sources that you might want to feed in to the same channel. So you might have, for example, two amplifiers, and maybe the guitar player plays through one amplifier for one song and switches to a second amplifier with a second microphone, just hit the alt button, and you can quickly switch the input that's feeding that particular channel. Because remember, our sources and everything that's on the back panel is separate from what's actually happening in our channels. Let's continue our tour of the channel strip. The next stop would be the gate. Of course, we can grab with our finger to adjust the threshold. We can also use the knobs to adjust the ratio, change the range, maybe dial that back a little bit, our attack time, hold, and so on. We can also adjust the envelope by grabbing here or by turning the knobs. The key filter is very flexible. We have several different choices here. It can be flat, low pass, high pass, or band pass. As we're looking at the low pass, high pass, and band pass, we can also be looking at a display that indicates the frequency range that's coming into that particular channel. We can solo the key, so we can really dial in and hear what's happening with what's triggering our gate. So we have a lot of functionality with a built-in gate on each of the wing's channels. Next stop on our channel strip is the EQ. Now the primary EQ is the wing EQ, which is a very powerful parametric EQ. It's a six-band EQ that features four sweepable bands, as well as high and low shelves. And we can switch among those over here, or you can simply reach out and grab the one that you want, adjust things using the knobs, and so on. And we have six additional types of EQ that are built in. We have an SSL style EQ, for example, Focusrite, Pultec, and so on. So no matter what style of EQ you prefer to work with, you can dial it right up for each channel independently. We also have filters that can be applied, and we have four different types of filters, Tilt, Maxer, AP90, and AP180. So you can really shape the frequency spectrum of every signal that's running through a channel. One very cool feature for live sound applications is the ability to solo the individual bands in a parametric EQ. This allows you to very quickly dial in and hear exactly what you're doing in a specific frequency range. Following the EQ, we have our compressor. We have a number of different types of compressors available. The wing compressor is a proprietary Behringer compressor. We also have a wing expander. 
And then we have models of vintage and very popular compressor types. We have a 160, 560, the red, an SSL type, Fairchild, and so on. Now all of these plug-in compressors, EQs, and other processors come free with the wing. You don't have to buy any licenses or add anything extra, they're all built in. To give you an idea of the power of the compressor, of course you have the normal controls. We have ratio, we have our threshold, we have a knee control, and so on, and you can grab those, again, using the touch screen. We also have this envelope, which makes it very easy to dial in exactly the type of response that you want. The detector can be either peak or RMS, and again we have a key filter with several different types available. And we can see the frequency readout right on the same screen along with that filter. We can solo the key so we can hear what's triggering a compressor. Each channel strip includes two different insert points, one pre-fader and one post-fader. So if we switch to that, we can now choose our effects processor, either as one of the built-in effects processors so we can insert, or we can access external hardware. So if we choose an internal processor, choose that over here, we could choose a plate reverb for example. We could also choose, as I mentioned, to use an external hardware processor. We choose external here, and then we can assign our output routing and our return routing as well. And that could be mono, stereo, or mid-side. There are many different types of processors available. So we have different reverbs, and those can be very advanced. For example, we have a very simple VSS-3 from TC Electronic, or we can choose one that allows us access to all of the parameters. We have phase shifters, tape machine effects, pitch correction, amplifier simulations, lots and lots of different processors are available. There are two different types of processors available inside the wing. Standard processors are fairly economical with their use of DSP processing power. Premium processors are going to use more DSP, but they're going to offer more features and enhance sound quality as well. So you want to pick and choose and use those where they're going to be appropriate for your mix. But there's plenty of processing power for running tons and tons of plugins and inserts inside the wing console. For our fader and panning, we can choose to route to the four master buses here. We can turn those on and off, as you can see. We can control them with a knob, or we can grab those and move them with our finger. And the panner is extremely powerful. Now we can just grab this and turn it. We can also narrow the stereo field. Or in fact, by going past 90 degrees, we can invert. We can even widen the stereo image. And again, we can turn that as well. Okay. So we have a lot of capability with the panner in the wing console. With the output fader, we have solo control, we have a mute control, and of course the fader itself. And when we move the fader here on the touch screen, it also moves on the face of the console. Our post fader insert works in exactly the same way as the pre fader insert. It's just going to follow what happens with our fader as we move that up and down. The final stop on the channel strip is our busing. Here we can see our 16 buses, and we can choose to route the signal into any or all of those buses that we prefer. From our home screen, we can also access our effects. So if we want to apply reverb to the entire console, we can do that from here. Next up, we have our metering page. At the top, we have our input channels, we have our aux inputs, 16 buses, 4 main buses, 8 matrix buses, and 8 DCAs. Now an important feature of this page is not only can you look at what's happening with the meters, if there's a problem, say feedback that's coming in on a channel, you can instantly jump to that channel. So let's say we have feedback on channel 29. One click here, one click here, and we can instantly control that. We looked a bit at the routing page earlier. This is where we set up our sources. The setup screen allows us to dig in deep and configure the console exactly the way that we want it. First up, we see the sample rate conversion that can be applied to the main input or the alt input on any channel. Select our clock rate and so on. Set the date and time, network configuration, I.O. configuration, and so on. But one of the important things here is being able to control all of the lighting of the console. We have lights on the front, we have lights underneath, and we also have a light on the back that illuminates the jack field. We can adjust the touch screen using this control, but if we hit the edit button, we can look at the backlight on the front console, which turns the knobs up and down. We can change the lighting of the buttons. We can backlight the scribble strips, the LED. We can also affect that lighting on the back panel, that patch lighting that allows us to see the connections. So we can turn that down or turn that back up. Glow is the ambience that glows from underneath the console. 
So if you want the console to have a nice lighted ambience, you can do that. If you want it to be totally dark, you could do that as well. This page also allows us to set up the metering, whether it's pre-fader or post-fader, and you can do that on a channel, bus, main, matrix, or DCA basis. When we're done, we can pop back. The next button accesses the library. This allows us to take snapshots of the entire console and call them up very quickly. So we could have different snapshots for different applications or for different groups that might be playing in a venue. We can even choose to recall just a part of a snapshot. So the channels, the source setups, the auxes, or so on, you can recall those separately. I've been working with the touchscreen laid back flat so it doesn't have glare on our video cameras, but you can pull that forward and set it at whatever angle you like. All the control that we had over the channel strip from the LCD display can also be accessed here in the channel strip section. These are all touch sensitive controls, so it will jump instantly to whatever their function is. We can choose filter, gate, comp, inserts, main output, or even the input. And again, by just touching a knob, we can control the various functions. Now, if you're working with something here and you want to have a better view of it, you can hit the view control and the touch screen will instantly jump to that same view. We can also instantly grab the EQ because this is going to be very important for us. So we have controls here that are dedicated to that as well. Gain, width, frequency, and so on. And again, we can jump that up to the view screen. One of the great features of the console is that we can configure it exactly the way that we want it in terms of layout. So for example, we could choose to have channel 1 here, and maybe channel 9 is one we want to have next to that, and maybe we want to have an aux send for those two channels right next to it. We can easily configure that and set it up and store it in a snapshot so we can instantly jump back there. So we aren't limited to arranging the channels in a numerical fashion or to having a particular bus in one particular place. You can put that wherever you want. Beyond that, we can also assign controls here in this customizable control section. So we can choose different presets. We have 16 different layers of controls that we can access here. So we might have one layer that's set up to access our compressor, for example. One layer might be set up to access another function, another layer, another function, and so on. So you can instantly jump to the things that you want by simply choosing a preset. At the bottom of this section, we have eight more assignable controls. So we could, for example, via MIDI, control our DAW. We could use the scroll wheel and so on. So we might have start, stop, and other controls arrayed onto these buttons right here. We have the DAW control switch as well. But we could also assign mute groups here, as well as show control. And again, we can jump whatever we're working on up to the LCD touchscreen. The jog wheel can also be used to control parameters. So if we hold a button down, there might be a particular parameter in a processor. We can have fine control over that by using the jog wheel. The main section here allows you to assign particular channels or buses that you want to be able to instantly access. So you might have your money channel. Maybe it's your lead vocal, and you always want that to live right here. So it's instantly accessible. And you could have other things assigned as well. Again, it's all totally configurable. So we might have our main matrix. You might have inputs, as we do here. It might be aux inputs, bus masters, or you can have user layers as well. So everything can be instantly assigned, and you can jump right to it. And again, we have that view control, so we can jump up here onto our LCD touchscreen if we like. Now, because all these sections are completely independent, one person can be working on the touchscreen and the faders, and another can be on the channel strip working on a completely separate channel, or over here working on a separate channel as well. This allows for two-person operation, but also allows you to have two different things going on at once, so you can very quickly access what you need. Rounding out the functionality of the Wing console is the ability to get audio in and out using USB, so you could connect this to a DAW for a multi-track recording. We can have 48 inputs and 48 outputs via USB to a computer. But the recording capability doesn't stop there. We also have two SD slots, and each of those can record 32 channels of audio, and we can sync them together for a total of 64 channels of audio. So by using both cards, we could do a large multi-track session, or we could have 32 channels on one card and mix it down to the second card. So you have a lot of versatility and functionality there. And those cards can also be used for playback for a virtual sound check as well. One of the best features of the Wing console is how easy it is to operate. I've really only had my hands on this console for about an hour, and I'm getting around pretty fluently. It's very simple to figure out where things are at and to be able to access the different functions that you want. The layout is very well conceived, and it makes a lot of sense once you stand in front of the console. And once you understand that separation of source from channel strip, all the flexibility and the versatility of the console really becomes apparent. If you're looking for a digital mixing console for your house of worship, for your venue, for your band, even for a recording studio, you definitely want to check out the Wing. It offers a ton of features, and those features are implemented in such a smart way. Lots of little touches that really take advantage of all the power that a digital mixing console can provide. And of course, the sound quality is outstanding. So you can rest assured that when you have all your sources plugged in and you've created your mix, you're going to get a great result. We've talked about a lot of the features of the Wing, but we've really only scratched the surface of what it can do. 
For complete information, contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or visit Sweetwater.com. Thanks for joining me for Sweetwater Soundcheck. I'm Mitch Gallagher. <laughs>